So, <coughs> React and TypeScript. Before I start, I want to ask you a question. How many of you are already using TypeScript? Wow, that's actually quite a fair amount. So probably you'll find this talk to be like, you know, very easy. Um, is anyone using Flow? <coughs> Interesting. Anyone using JS doc? No one. That's cool. I must admit we actually use it on uh, one of our products. So, a uh, quick background. Just about myself and my experience with TypeScript. Actually, I only started using TypeScript quite recently. And we use it at my company where we are creating a mobile app using React Native. And instead of Redux, we use another state management library, MobX. And although I come from a um, statically type languages background, I used a lot of Java and .NET in the past. When I started doing JavaScript some time ago, I really liked how dynamic and how expressive it was. I really like object literals, especially when prototyping different APIs. But recently at my new company, I um, started using TypeScript. And honestly, I just cannot look back because we have two products. Uh, one new product in TypeScript and one existing product in JavaScript. And every time I have to use JavaScript, I feel like I'm really missing the safety of the type system. And I'm going to demonstrate you why by just going straight into examples. Um, it's quite common, right? In the JavaScript world, there is like this to-do application where people test different frameworks. And I decided to do something similar, but much simpler. So imagine if you have uh, a very simple app. It just displays a to-do item. And that app has a bug. So here, uh, we were meant to see some additional description. But we don't see it for some reason. And another thing is, uh, this app is written in, in JavaScript. And we'll try to fix this bug, and then I'll demonstrate how we could have avoided that if we had used TypeScript. So this is like you know a fairly simple code. Uh, we're not calling any API. We're not reading any files. We just pretend that we have an input task, and it's got its own format, and we pass it to the task component, and also we do some data transformation. Because imagine we have some third-party API. It returns us data in some odd format. We're not quite happy with this. Uh, we don't want to show that ugliness in our component, but we want to have a nice transformation. So probably the bug is in one of this. So if you look at the source code of um, this transform task component, we can see it's something like this. Hmm, do you guys see any problem? Oh, I can see, I can see actually something because um, input task, the description is on the sub-object called details and here we assume it is like this, right? So if I type details, press save, I would assume that it would actually appear. I will try to press save. Maybe there's something wrong with my health reload. Nothing appears. Okay. Maybe the problem is somewhere else. Maybe it's in our component. And it's got prop types, by the way, which were meant to make it like a very safe and help us to spot errors. But actually, it's not happening. And I can see that I misspelled the name of the attribute. I thought it was just desk, but turns out it is description. So I'm gonna save it, and hopefully, we'll see that, uh, I need to refresh it. Oh, I didn't save actually the file. Demo gremlins. Right, now it tells me I need to buy one pint of semi-skimmed, not whole milk, good. So <clears throat> this was just an example how in JavaScript, even if you use linters, even use prop types, you can still spend some time trying to figure out like very silly bugs. 
where you just mistype something or just not quite understand the input or the output format. And this is where the benefits of uh, static type systems are really are. So if I show you the same app but written in TypeScript, you see how the type system will help to avoid us those problems straight away. Uh, so I have this project called React, React TypeScript Web App, Web Pack, and it's got something similar. It's got this app class, and we see the same input task, and there is this function which I commented out because I decided to leave its implementation up to this talk. And um, I thought it's a bit difficult to hold the microphone and uh, do live coding. So if I open that file, transform task, right? We'll see something like this. So the first thing we have in TypeScript, we decided to provide an explicit declaration of our input arguments, input task. And here we put, we expect name to be a string. We know that there will be a sub-object called details. It may have or may not have description, and it will have something called date, which is a string. And what we need to do is just to fill the blanks and to write the code which will transform it from the input format into something which is accepted by our component task. And in this case, task already tells us explicitly what it wants. Not in prop types, but in actually in static TypeScript tax, uh, types, it expects a task object with title, maybe description, and due date, which is not a string, but a JavaScript data object. So I'm gonna demonstrate how using TypeScript will have to avoid us this problem. So let's just write this transformation task. So what we need to do is just to return an object with title, input task, and we can see right now, we already have the power of IntelliSense. And it tells us what we can do. Okay, title is name, then description is gonna come from input task. Actually, if I try to do like previously, if I type type input task this, the description, the IDE will already give me an error. That that property simply doesn't exist on the input object. So I get the support from the type system just as I'm typing my code, just as I'm developing. And due date is input task uh, details date and that has to be a data object. Oh, that's interesting. So I fill the blanks in the function, but something is still not wrong. Now I can see an error. Here it says that I cannot pass that value to my component. Something is missing. Sorry? What did I miss? That's a proper description are uh, incompatible. It could be either string or undefined. Indeed. Perfect. Thank you. Bit of the type system. So if I open another tab, we'll have it, it's all working. But I have a question to you. Did you also notice something else? So we have defined this function, transform task. We have defined its, the type of its input arguments. 
but what we have not done. Exactly. Why? And does it hinder us? Well, it would have highlighted your issue. Uh, That's true. That's absolutely true. Uh, we could have uh, declared here a return type, and it's quite easy to do. But equally, I mentioned that I really like how expressive JavaScript was. So TypeScript doesn't try to minimize that expressiveness power. You can still um, write minimal code but get benefits from a strong type system because when we saw this error, it already managed to infer the return type of the function by analyzing what it returns. So this task, if we try to access, for example, task.foo, we'll get an error because it says it doesn't exist on the type. So even though the type is not explicitly defined by interface or type or class, it is still inferred by the TypeScript compiler. So far so good? Now, another thing. Uh, if you look at the source code of our component itself, there's gonna be a simple function uh, component and TypeScript already provides types for that. So we can define that it is a variable um, whose type is actually a function. And also, we're not using prop types here, um, but we pass into generic props, which allows us to define what our property should be. And we already saw that it works when they try to pass something we didn't quite confirm with um, the standard. But okay, to be fair, if we were using prop types in JavaScript, we didn't spot it in compile time, or maybe with some like, you know, VS Code extension with lint, and we could have spotted that. We definitely found the problem in the runtime. But remember, in our JavaScript implementation of the same component, we also had an issue that we misspelled uh, the attribute description, we have the call desk, right? But the beauty of TypeScript is like, if you use a field which is not defined, your compiler is once again gonna spot it because that is defined on the input arguments. So even though I didn't explicitly specify uh, the type of the props, it is actually inferred from generic argument. So that's the beauty of type inference, which allow you to write um, least amount of code, but get the most of the benefits. So far, so good. Okay, there is another thing um, which I didn't mention about this component. It is typed styles. So how many of you are using CSS modules? That's quite surprising. I didn't expect that many people using TypeScript. Um, but, so CSS. Uh, you define your style sheets, you create class names, maybe ideas, right? But this is also prone to errors, that you may define one class name in your CSS file, your SAS file, whatever you're using, and then you pass something else to your components. So TypeScript, uh, with some Webpack um, uh, loaders can also allow you to create type style sheets. So we have this task with CSS. Um, actually, they're just a CSS file. So like really nothing special here. This is just a CSS file. It could be a SAS file, it could be a last file, it could be a styles file. But when you import it, this styles object is strongly typed. So if I type task ZZZ, once again, I will see an error. If I type styles full stop, it will give me actual list of classes. So it, it feels like magic, but that's done through, um, as I mentioned, a Webpack loader. Uh, called typings for CSS modular, 
what it does, it actually generates um, uh, TypeScript uh, def type definitions based on your CSS classes. And I'll talk a bit more about these type definitions when I'm, uh, when I, I'm gonna be talking about migration from JavaScript to TypeScript. So far so good, any questions? Just gonna briefly um, return to my presentation. So another thing I want to mention, right, so even if you write in JavaScript or any other dynamically typed language, where we don't use types explicitly, we still assume uh, certain types, because it would be very rare that you would define a variable which would first hold a string, and then you would assign an object value to it. So if you're skeptical about using types, just think about it. And as I have demonstrated to you, like you get this incredible power of the type system which can help you to spot many bugs as early as possible, especially when you deal with variables um, whose type is an, is an object. And those objects can be complex. I remember at one of my previous companies, we um, were developing actually JavaScript SDK and we really want to provide like a good user experience so that if a developer was passing a wrong argument, it would actually return a nice message instead of like, you know, throwing an error kind of called blah, 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 from defined. And like we had to write uh, our own validation library and create a lot of unit tasks which were effectively emulating the type system. But with TypeScript, you can actually get it provided to you. Now, um, another thing of the TypeScript is um, it's got actually a pretty big adoption rate. There are a few big libraries which are written in TypeScript. So, for example, Mobax. How many of you um, are using Mobax as a state management? Are you guys all using Redux or React Hooks? I feel for you. <laughs> So Firebase, not Firebase itself, but the Firebase JavaScript SDK is written in TypeScript. Controversially, but Angular is written in TypeScript, and so is RxJS. Just, all it comes from Facebook, who are the guys behind the flow, but if you have a look at the Just GitHub repository, you will see that source code is increasingly more and more in TypeScript. Actually, speaking of our TypeScript and flow, so um, that's actually statistics from NPM. So the blue line is TypeScript, and the orange line is Flow. So Flow has been stagnant, where TypeScript is getting bigger and bigger. And um, that also, um, those two lines, a number of questions uh, with TypeScript or Flow type uh, on Stack Overflow. So, you are in good hands if you're using TypeScript. This is not just some obscure language. There is like a big community behind it. Another statistic from uh, Stack Overflow, it's in top three most loved languages. Okay, so, so far I have demonstrated to you how we can actually uh, add type annotations to props, to various utility functions, and so on. But what about state? Uh, what about React hooks, which is just in the way of doing state? That's also possible. Um, just a quick example of um, uh, using state. So it's pretty similar. I just created another class which allows us to um, add a list of tasks. And we decided not to use any state management, but manage it inside it. So once again, you define your component. And in this case, it's actually quite a fat, pure component. It doesn't have any props, but second generic argument is state. And once again, it just allows us to type it. So. If I, for example, type something here, task is easy, I'll immediately get a compiler error. And I'll task a collection of tasks, so I can do something here, and like if we add a new task, 
uh, once again, we have like, you know, the full support of the time system. So for example, if I try to pass a numeric value to a string argument, I'll get this message. I uh, didn't have time to write it in React hooks, but um, I've seen the code. So there are typings for React hooks, and they allow you to specify the type of your arguments. OK. So TypeScript has also a number of other cool features. And one of them is a strict null and undefined checks. Because I remember using Java and C-Shop, right? Seemingly strongly typed languages, but you can still pass null into your methods. And the compiler will not stop you from doing this. So luckily the guys behind TypeScript, they thought about the problem and they added that to the language. So if you come back to this up the task, right? So if I just create another variable called transfer equals now, if I try to pass it here, I'll get an error. That, that sounds simple, right? But in so many purple languages, this is magic. But you may have a question, right? So this is all nice and easy. This is just like, you know, a nice example. I'm getting data basically from myself by just like, you know, writing it a few lines above. But in the real world, right, um, you're dealing with data coming from elsewhere. You're dealing with APIs. You're dealing maybe with even like, you know, reading files. How do you go about it? Well, when it comes to APIs, luckily, uh, we have API specs, right? If you're using um, a RESTful API, we have Swagger now called Open API, which allows us to create a specification of our API and define what, what our request objects are and what response are. And then there are a great number of libraries which allow us to generate an API client library using fetch, using Axios, using anything else. And that will provide us type safety. And similar for GraphQL. And just, I think I'm just like, you know, quite um, short on time. Uh, just gonna demonstrate one of my uh, favorite features, which is called um, string enums, right? So, so very often, right, um, we are writing a functional component, and it will have a property which is not Boolean, but let's say it may have three possible values, right? And like, you start writing a name and you create a class, like say, on, off, disable, blah, 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 equals one, two, three. That's cool, but in, um, in TypeScript, uh, you can create uh, string enum. So just a silly example. If I start running a function called foo, accepts an argument called bar, and it could be, for example, one or two. So the function doesn't do anything, and I just defined it in line. Okay, I already have foo. Um, but I didn't have to define any enum, I just declare that this argument bar can either be one or two. And if I call foo and I try to pass three, I'll get an error. I find it like fascinating. Once again, like TypeScript, like man just to have like, you know, all the simplicity of JavaScript, but also all the power of a strong type system. So, you may have a question, what about third parties? Third party libraries, right? Because like, I mean, we cannot just write software by re-implementing everything. I'm already talking about React. Luckily, it's not a problem. Many libraries already come with uh, TypeScript definitions. Even if a certain library doesn't have them, you can install them separately uh, from definitely typed. And Actually, I'll give you that example of installing um, 
the type definition library from definitely typed. So imagine if you want to use lodash uh, in our application. So let's add npm install save lodash. I just realized it may not work because I don't have internet connection, but I seem to have local NPM cache. Phew. <laughs> Dungeon averted, right? So I'll try to import all that, see what happens. Yeah, couldn't find type declarations. What to do? Easy. Get uh, definitely typed. NPM install, actually, I'm just going to repeat what I type. Save all dash, we just prefix this with types. Boom. The power of local cache. Um, now, dungeon averted. It can be imported, and it can do a silly thing. I can transform the title of my task into kebab case. Let's say, low dash, kebab case, The other one. Oh. Ooh. Here it is. Got some errors though, but um, I don't think I'm going to demonstrate, right? If you try to put something silly in here, you'll get errors. So you can actually get type definitions for uh, third party libraries quite easy. Now I have like a minute and a half perhaps. Uh, <laughs> a half. So, you may think, that's all cool, right? But you have a 20,000 lines of code in your existing React and JavaScript project. Good story is, you don't need to wait like, you know, for a shiny Greenfield project. You can actually start migrating to TypeScript gradually. And Documentation says you can do a simple thing, just rename your JavaScript files into TypeScript. I wouldn't recommend doing that because you'll get a lot of um, compilation errors and warnings about type any, about lack of type definitions. But you can actually, in your project, you can have both modules written in JavaScript and TypeScript side by side. If I had more time, I would have shown it to you. So probably I'll have to write a blog post about it. But it's totally possible to call um, a TypeScript module uh, from a JavaScript module. That's quite easy, especially if you, if you use Webpack and uh, awesome uh, TypeScript loader. It's also possible to do it the other way around. You can import a JavaScript component or a module into your TypeScript components, TypeScript modules, and you don't even need to refactor your existing JavaScript modules. You can provide a standalone type definition, which will keep the implementation, but will guarantee you type safety. And quickly, any disadvantages? So, so now checks are sometimes prone to data flow analysis issues. Like I created this issue on a GitHub repo, so like, um, if I say a third variable and do like additional checks, you will still get an error and, um, it is struck by some other issue, and so far I got a response that it may be difficult because it required them to have a more sophisticated um, flow analyzer. And another issue is at runtime, it's still JavaScript. That means like when you are trying to do some runtime checks, you only have like you know basic type checks, whether it's you know string number object. So if you're trying to do something clever with analyzing data coming from your APIs. I won't be able to do reflection like Java and C sharp, so you need to be mindful of that. Thank you for your time. <laughs>